Suicide is one of the leading causes of death for young people, but it doesn't have to be. She was new and seemed like she was having a hard time fitting in. I really don't remember her being involved in anything. He took the breakup really hard. Things weren't the same after she failed the test. He worried a lot about disappointing his family. He started having a hard time when his parents separated. People were always picking on him and calling him names. She started sitting by herself and didn't talk much to others. She started to miss school a lot. Every time I saw him by his locker, he looked like he had been crying. I noticed that she posted weird messages on social media like, soon this will all be over. I knew something was up when he gave away his grandpa's watch. He had always told me how much he loved it. I was worried about him because he wasn't as talkative and kind of moody. And I started to notice that he would quit talking to his friends and he isolated himself from all of his groups that he was in. She said she wished she could go to sleep and not wake up. She said she was tired of feeling lonely. She told me that she felt hopeless about pulling her grades up. He said he wished he could disappear so he would not be a burden to his family. He told me he, I didn't have to worry about him after break. I thought about standing up for him finally, but I didn't want to become their next victim. I wanted to know if he was thinking about suicide, but I didn't know what to say if he said yes. I did wonder if I was making a too big of a deal about it. I didn't want to offend her. I knew someone in the past who had attempted suicide too. I didn't want to risk it. Even though I didn't know what to do, I knew I had to do something because I was worried about him. I thought about inviting her to play basketball, but I figured someone else already did, so I didn't. I was always taught to mind my own business. Everyone has a rough time at school, right? I kept thinking, what if it were me? I'd want a friend to do something. So I shared problems that I had in the past and asked him if he felt comfortable talking to a teacher. So I asked him, are you thinking about suicide? The more we talked, the more concern he shared for his safety, so we agreed to talk to the guidance counselor. I didn't want to be the one to blame if something happened, so I asked her if she was having suicidal thoughts. She said yes, so I called the crisis line and got advice on how to help. I would rather have her mad at me than dead, or even hurt. So I walked up and said I'm sorry and offered to spend the rest of the afternoon with him so we could talk. I thought to myself I'd feel better knowing I did something. We talked about who could be helpful for extra support for them and decided to call their family and tell them what's been going on. So I went to my coach and started to ask how I could help. At River Valley, we take care of each other. At River Valley, we look out for each other. At River Valley, we're a team. Once a Raider, always a Raider. At Galley Academy, we support each other. At Galley Academy, we never walk alone. Once, Once a, a devil, devil, always a devil. At South Gaia, we believe in each other. At South Gaia, we're a family. Once a rebel, always a rebel. There are things you can do to identify problems and help someone in need. Recognize when they are having thoughts of suicide and respond. Warning signs for suicide can be verbal cues of feeling hopeless, helpless, or trapped. Withdrawal. Isolation. Change in mood or sleep patterns. Substance abuse, alcohol, and other drugs. Giving away important possessions. Looking for and obtaining necessary items. And talking about death or dying. Take action or get others involved. Ask directly about suicide. Express concern. Listen with empathy and no judgment. Remind them help is available. Remind them they're not alone. Make a referral to a mental health professional, guidance counselor, or community resource. In this community, we're all in this together.